<clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is the uh, meeting of the trustees of Osgood Hill for Wednesday, March 31st, 2021, 5 p.m. Uh, held remotely uh, uh, on uh, Google Meet and conference call. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general laws, uh, chapter C.30A, section 18, and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order, imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the trustees of Osgood Hill will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town's website at www.northandovera.gov. Uh, for this meeting, members of the public who wish to watch the meeting may do so on their televisions by tuning in to Comcast Channel 99 or Verizon Channel 28 or all online at www.northandovercam.org. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so despite best efforts, we will post on the Town of North Andover website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of the proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. If the public would like to participate in public hearings like this one, please email in this particular case your question or comment prior to or during the meeting to dbrown at northandoverma.gov. That's dbrown at northandoverma.gov. The question or comment will be read during the proceedings and responded to accordingly. Okay, so let me do a roll call, see who is here. One moment. I think it does not like it when I steal paper from it. All right, so doing the roll call now. Um, There we are. Uh, Jerry Justin. Jerry's here. Thank you. Robin Ellington. Robin is here. Thank you, Robin. Uh, Jean Irwin. Nope. Um, Charles Matheson. Okay. Um, I'm here, David Brown, the chair. Um, we don't have a quorum. Oh no, I'm sorry, Tom, Tom's here, Tom, Thomas Dugan. Hello. Hi, Tom. All right, good, we have a quorum, that's four. Okay, uh, also we have Andrew Shapiro. Hello. Director of Community of Finance, I forget what your title is, Andrew. Sorry. Yeah, it's all right. Not a, a community and economic development. It's a mouthful. Thank you. Community and economic development. It was right on the tip of my tongue. Um, and we also have our director of the Stevens Estate Operations, Joanna. Hi, Joanna. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Joanna Palantini. Okay. Um, let me double check. As of a few minutes ago, I had no, uh, no in advance public comment, but I will check live. Make sure that's still the case, and I'll keep an eye on it during the meeting. Okay, nope. I did email Charles the link, so hopefully he has gotten that, and he'll join. Uh, I'm not sure where where uh, Gene is. All right. There we go. Um, okay, we have meeting, We have never approved. We've never approved the January minutes, so we need to approve both the January and the February minutes. So, um, Jerry, you want to? Um, Jerry had. They are posted and attached. Hopefully, everyone has had a chance to read them. So, uh, someone want to make a motion to approve January? Tom. Yep. Yeah, yeah. um, I think I'll 
I'll make that motion. Sorry. Thank you. And you unmute. <laughs> I second. saw a hand waving, but no <laughs> voice. Okay, go ahead. Jerry, are you going to second that? Yep. Sure. Okay. Um, uh, quick roll call vote uh, uh, in favor or, or opposed. Jerry? Aye. Robin? I saw her say aye. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Tom? Aye. And I, uh, I also approve as the chair, so the January minutes are approved. Someone has just joined us. Charles, is that you? And whoever it is is on mute. Yeah, you're on mute. You don't need to unmute yourself. And if you're on a phone, you can do so by pressing star six. Okay, they're unmuted, it looks like. Charles? Who is Mr. or Ms. Unknown? Now they're raising their hand. Yeah, I saw that, but no audio. Who is it? Star, what do they have to do on a phone, Andrew? Star? Star six, if they're on a phone. Yeah. But I don't think it's... Well, it's coming from unknown, so it's hard to know if they're on the phone or not. Yeah, if you got a phone, it would normally show a phone number, probably. Uh, well, is there anything in the chat? Yep, uh, the person can you, whoever it is, can use the chat. It's up in the right-hand corner. I mean, we can't have them use the chat really for the for public meeting purposes, but just to just to communicate, know what's going on. Yeah. Um, it's on the upper right, right hand corner. It's next to the people icon. It, if you I run your cursor over it, it says chat with everyone. Yeah, there's nothing mm. there. I was gonna I was gonna type something there myself just to see if I could. Oh yeah. Dave, it might be just good to just proceed and see if this person can, can whoever it is, can uh, resolve the issue in the next minute or two, and then maybe we can pause again to see. Yeah, all right. I, I don't know what to say. That's fine. I'm, uh, somehow, uh, <clears throat> some reason I accidentally turned on captions. It's making me crazy. Trying to get rid of this. All right, well, whatever. Um, Okay, so now we need to uh, make a motion about the February minutes. Yep, says so Jerry, I make a motion that we approve the minutes from February 2021. And I'll second that. Chair seconds that. So roll call vote. Um, Jerry? Aye. Robin? Aye. Tom? Aye. And the chair votes yes. All right, our minutes are approved from January, February. All right, next on the agenda, we have uh, my update, Chairman's update. So a couple of things here. Uh, the town uh, uh, the town has, of course, a while ago issued the RFP for management of the estate. Uh, there was uh, one bid ex um, submitted on time, one bid submitted late, so by law had to be ignored. Uh, the bid that was submitted on time was reviewed by a review committee, which consisted of myself, um, uh, Andrew, uh, um, Jim LaFond, who was chairman of the long-term planning committee, um, doing this from memory, the, uh, the other gentleman from the long-term planning committee, Joseph Pellich, Joseph Pellich, um, Lori, uh, Lori Burke. Yeah, yep. Lori Burslaff, the assistant town manager, and I believe that was everybody. Um, and Andrew, right? And Andrew, I mentioned Yeah, I, I, yep, and did you, I'm, I'm assuming you meant, did you say Melissa too? Yes, Melissa was there. Um, yeah. Yes, Melissa, uh, town manager, Melissa Rodriguez was there as well. So, um, you know, we each individually uh, uh, were asked to uh, uh, assess it according to a, uh, predetermined formula, uh, and all of us did. Uh, we had, um, they many the uh, folks from Fireside Catering made a presentation and um, it was not just, uh, we're gonna talk about this more later, Robin, but it was not just a catering proposal. It was in fact a management proposal. Um, 
so it was reviewed um, and we, we, by the way, as a review committee, did not have access at that point to any of the financial aspects of the proposal. It was simply the, um, you know, the, the formal um, written and then therefore orally presented proposal on their background, on their qualifications, et cetera. Um, and we rated it strictly on that. Then separately, uh, after that was concluded, uh, that was summarized by uh, town manager Rodriguez and presented to the selectmen along with the financial detail uh, uh, you know, of the proposal. And it was her, the town manager's recommendation that the selectmen uh, accept it and go into negotiations. And um, uh, that's where it is as far as I know at the moment. I don't believe the negotiations have begun, but uh, the recommendation to the board of selectmen was that they do that and I believe they approved that and they just have not taken the next step yet. Is that Andrew, Andrew do I have that correct? Yes. And we're we're starting negotiations tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. So that excuse me, Dave. Can I yes. just ask a clarifying question based on your um, summary, which was excellent. Thank you. Yes. I just want to make sure I understood I heard something right. So when you, as a member of the, um, someone's puppy is excited. Out there. <laughs> um, I think that's somebody, right? Robin, I think that noise is coming from you. I was hoping that my earplugs would okay. make it sounded like a it's, chew toy. It's, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I put them in the kitchen. Okay, okay thanks. Um, I just wanted to make sure I understood. Um, as as a reviewer and part of the review committee, you did not review the proposal based on the economic, did not score or review the proposal based on the economic terms of the of the of the proposal. It was just based on the programmatic aspects. That's correct. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify that. Yep. Thank you. Okay, sure. All right. So that that's my Which report. Oh, go ahead, Robin. If I could ask a question, sure. That that's that uh, prompts another question. Then, Tom, if it doesn't include the financial aspects, if we don't know who's going to be paying the bills, for example, or which bills, and what's covered and what's not covered, how can that proposal be pushed forward? So I I can answer that. Um, so we, as a, a reviewing subcommittee myself and Jim and, and Joe and, and Andrew, Lori and Melissa, in that part of it did not contain any financial information. However, when Melissa put it forward to the selectmen, she did include financial summaries. And I believe that's public, um, right? That was in the selectmen's minutes from the, I don't know if it's their most recent meeting, but whatever meeting it was that it was covered in, it's there. Yeah, and I would just add, it's not uncommon when you're, um, um, you know, when you're reviewing, when you're undergoing an RFP process such as this, um, you know, even if it's for something like redevelopment of a town-owned, city-owned property, for instance, uh, there's a review committee formed and they review, um, you know, proposals based on the substantive um, programmatic uh, aspects of the proposal versus what the financials um, bear out and those um, the financial or the price proposals held under sealed envelope and only opened after um, the review process has taken place. Okay. So yeah. So does that does that include parameters such as they'll have an on-site manager or who's going to be present at the estate during the day? Um, cleaning the bathrooms. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things that need to be looked after. And I didn't see that itemization or the responsibilities mapped out. Dave, you want to answer that or respond um, to that? Or do you want well, to answer that? So, well, I can, I can, I think I can answer that partially. Maybe you can fill in answer anything that if I missed something. So that uh, the operational components of it, so day-to-day -day operations and things like that, were definitely described in the proposal, uh, and how uh, you know at a at a high level how they would staff it. Um, I would imagine the the comp 
complete details of that are what would be a result of the negotiations. But they did address the points in in the um, you know in the in the as Tom called it the programmatic aspect of it. They you know they uh, part of that process was we also uh, had a, a look at the biographies of all of the management people in that in their company. Um, was part of that package, and uh, they indicated they would had they would have dedicated staff uh, at that site. I at least one, and I believe what they. I'd have to go back and look at my notes to be absolutely certain, but there's certainly at least one person dedicated, and I believe they indicated probably more. Um, but certainly at least one person full time dedicated to this spot, to to the Oscar Hill spot, and. Um, you know, they are complete responsibility for maintenance and things like that on the on the uh, on the building. So will we as a board have an opportunity to review those negotiation topics as it moves along? That I don't how know. Do, how does that yeah. work? Yeah, that I don't know the answer to. You know, you know, at this point, it's really kind of more so in the town's hands. Um, you know, it's the negotiation. The group, the, the people that are um, involved in the negotiation are the town manager, uh, myself, town council, Suzanne Egan, um, and two appointed members of the select board. And I think it was uh, select select woman uh, Rosemary Smedili and um, and uh, selectman Dick Ballancourt. So, um, you know, at this point, that's you know that's where we're at. I think um, at, at some point uh, the negotiated uh, contract, a management contract, will have to go back before the full uh, select board, I'd imagine. Um, so at that point, certainly that's in the full public view and this board and really anybody from town could review it and make public comment in regards to it. Okay. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah, sure. So that's, that's, uh, that's all that I have to report on, on, on the, um, status of the RFP, then my part B. Um, oh, this is, so this Jerry, just yep. Dave, I wanna acknowledge you for your participation and representation on the, one, the RFP draft review and before it went out and also your participation on the evaluation committee really as a representative of this board. Um, I think we should all feel confident that our interests were well represented by Dave's participation in both the prep of the RFP and the review of the eval, even though there are certain aspects that are still open, that's really under the purview of Melissa and the select board with keeping us and town residents informed. So thank you, Dave. Thank, thank you, Jerry. Actually, I, I should add a little bit more, um, I will add a little bit more commentary just to, I'm hearing you say that actually reminded me of something. So, um, you know, I have to say, I, I felt this is now opinion. I, I think it's okay to state because that was my role, right? Was to participate and report back to, to this board about it. I did feel pretty confident that these folks are the right kind of folks. Uh, they have a number, um, and, and I don't know if uh, I don't know if the public can see the full proposal. I, 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 I don't know uh, whether they can or not, but I, I feel comfortable commenting that I was confident that these are the right kinds of people to run um, a facility like this. They have great experience doing work um, in the town of Broughton, Mass, um, where they, you know, really did a true public-private partnership there uh, to take on a, a historic property, and uh, by all accounts, have done a wonderful job with it. Uh, are really environmentally sensitive for the, uh, the land around that. Uh, and part of they, I mean, they have their own farm where they grow the food for their catering operation. Uh, so they are, they are, and and I did um, all of the members of the uh, of the evaluation commit committee each had a, a an interview a reference for them, uh, and I ref I, I, my particular um, reference that I checked uh, was. The president of um, no, wait, wait a second, guys. 
there are so many um, acronyms and names, I'm getting them mixed up. But I can tell you one second who it was. While you do that, Dave, I'll just quickly mention, I, I, I checked a reference on them as well, Town of Groton, the town manager there, and he had literally nothing bad to say about these guys. And they, he, you know, commended them for preserving the, the several acres of property at Gibbet Hill Farm and, um, you know, allowing ac public access to the walking trails there, um, the ability for the, the public to park and use the trails. Um, and he even said that they're just very cooperative in terms of helping the general um, you know, hospitality industry in town. He's, they work closely with an inn in town that has no connection to Gibbet Hill whatsoever, but they have lent their expertise and, and support to that inn, um, I think after they had a major fire, um, because, you know, they want that inn to thrive, to support the town as a whole, and to support their wedding venue business as well. And I think they're just very, um, it seems like from the conversations we had, or at least that I had, they're very, um, all in on on their management of different uh, venues. So, so the person I interviewed was Christopher Weld, who is the chairman of Project Adventure, which is, uh, you know, advanced active learning. Uh, uh, it's it's an organization, a nonprofit that educates students, schools, mental health professionals, and other community groups through adventure based experiences. They are located at Moraine Farm in Beverly, uh, which is a former estate grounds designed by Frederick Law Olmsted. So a somewhat similar scenario to what we have here. Um, you know, they have events on that property, et cetera. Uh, and they launched their um, relationship with, with the uh, folks at Fireside uh, um, in 2010. So they've been, uh, they've been part this, in this private, pub, a private nonprofit partnership with those guys for 11 years. Uh, he had nothing but fabulous things to say about them. Um, you know, he, he couldn't be happier with that relationship. Uh, you know, it's been very successful. It's really helped, uh, helped turn their, um, their, their um, financials around. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a similar situation. And again, I got uh, all great, just great feedback from them. So I thought that would, that's worth mentioning, you know, here because it's, you know, it, they are short of a pure nonprofit bidder. This was pretty, for a profit making enterprise, this, this bid to me came pretty close to what we would have wanted to see. And furthermore, I think it's okay for me to state that they are open. They told us straight out that they're open to um, pursuing a, a partnership with a nonprofit to, um, to, encompass more of what North Andover was looking for in terms of the uh, maintenance of the, of the land around it, right? The trails and everything else. So um, it's not out of the question that that could happen. And they're open to it and they have experience doing exactly that at, at uh, uh, Gibbet Hill Farm that Andrew was mentioned. So I, I can, in summary, I can say, I, I mean, yes, a, a full nonprofit would have been that's what we were originally seeking and would have been, you know, maybe superior to this, but I really feel like this, this certainly met what our, our objectives, as I understand. So Dave, I, I don't, I know that the agenda has a bunch of different topics and there are some sidebar questions, but yep. are, are you opening to, you know, answering any questions that we may have about the bid and, and some things that may have come up during your, you know, review of it? I just, well, I, I have a couple of general questions. Well, I, I guess the best way to proceed on that would be for me to hear what you want to know. And then I'll, I'll let, I mean, I don't think I'm permitted to disclose details, but I think what's been disclosed, Melissa disclosed a fair amount in her, in her um, pitch to the select. select. Well, I think you're, I think you're okay on talk speaking to us just because I, I know yeah, that Melissa been made. Right. And also that she released the, um, the written scoring sheets that everybody had on the committee. Oh, okay. So it, it's out there. It's known, you know, that you scored their proposals favorable. Um, yeah. Okay. okay so so yeah. the, once the decision, the policy decisions made, you know, pretty much everything's open 
open for discussion and, and review. Um, I guess one of the things that I, I have a question about, Dave, is, you know, I've looked through and I'm familiar with their property in Groton and, you know, it is a state park and, and managed by the, the state now. But one of the things that struck me was there's a pretty steep revenue climb in both proposals, in the proposal, and in both discussions at the uh, Board of Selectmen, you know, they talk about getting up to a million two or a million five in revenue. Um, and I guess one of the questions I have is how you do that is to get there through more events or and or increased pricing. And one of the things that strikes me about the estate is even though it is unfairly oftentimes painted as just solely a wedding venue, if you actually look at the number of events that have been done over the past five years, it's actually more community events for sports leagues, um, local companies, schools, families, than purely weddings. So I'm kind of wondering, as you talked with the uh, references or you had your interviews or you're reviewing it, how, you know, how does the, are we going to be in a position where maybe the, the town is going to be changing the pricing and asking people to pay more to use the facility for those types of community events. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how they get to that 1.2 or $1.5 million number that was in the last, um, last board meeting. Right. So, uh, I, so, uh, you know, our job wasn't to that, uh, you know, kind of that part of it, the financial part of it. No, I understand, but did yeah. they talk about their experience at other properties oh. as they as they did that? You mean you brought up the project adventure? Yeah, and you know they supposedly helped increase the net revenue for that property, and I'm just trying to understand how they, what their experience was in doing that. Yeah, so I I mean, I my my takeaway from what they said was that they you know they bring they bring a lot of things they bring uh you know a lot of experience managing these kinds of things they do have a, a lot of they do um because they grow their a lot of their own produce for example and they're they have a, a an off-site uh kitchen you know a, a commissary i think they call it um they have some scale that they can take advantage of that helps them a lot and they did make a big point about that that they have a they can apply that scale to these different operations um you know the um so that's one way that i think they they kind of increase um their if that doesn't increase revenue but that might decrease in cost so they increase their margins right well uh, their margins not the town's margins because yeah, the was, way it's structured sure yeah. um uh in terms of well i can also make a comment about um, town you know town events they're, you know, they, they were 100% supportive of that. And I believe in it, at, certainly at the, um, uh, at Gibbet Hill, they talked about a number of such events and the their town manager in his, in his written um, uh, um, reference mentions that. Um, so they, you know, they are definitely, and, and that could, that will, I, I believe be a part of the negotiation, right? We're gonna insist that they, continue to support the things we need them to do so that we can host town events at the Stevens estate. Um, well, it's not so much it's town events. It's more, you know, the perception that the, the estate is solely for weddings, which it's, you know, if you look at the history of the number of events there, it's not only town events like holidays, but it's, you know, the role it plays for youth hockey leagues and sports leagues and all sorts of other events that have taken place there that are not necessarily municipal like the school department or something like that but right you know more community-based it's a community-based um facility so i'm just trying to understand their perspective of how they've worked in their own if if it came up in your conversation of yeah how that they've worked with their own com with their communities and you know you get to more revenue through two ways right more events or increased pricing right and i, I would hate to see pricing be increased on a lot of community organizations that already have really thin margins. Yeah, I, I didn't really cover that. I didn't, I don't recall discussions along those lines. Okay. I mean, Dave, I, you know, just from my vantage point, I, 
did we get down, did we drill down to the hyper specificity of like the potential to, um, you know, continue to host um, sports league banquets and, and events and things like that? I can't say that we did. Um, it's good. It's, it's a good thought. And I don't think that, I, I think generally speaking at a very high level, uh, we came away with respect to, you know, community events and uh, them wanting to, uh, you know, ho host public facing events and be open. I think uh, at a high level, we found that they're very willing and open to work with the town and our partners um, on those efforts. And, and we're taking them at face value for that, but we're continuing to drill down further as we do uh, the negotiations. Um, so we'll have to, so we'll have to tease that out a bit. I think it's a good thought, um, but I, I didn't get the impression that they're going to um, make, uh, you know, uh, have a high cost hurdle for local organizations. That wasn't, that wasn't specifically brought up, but we'll have to, we'll have to vet that. No, but I do think I, I'm taking a note on that because I think that's feedback we should give to, um, at least to Melissa for, you know, negotiating purposes, she should be considering that. So Tom, with your permission, I'll, I'll, um, I'll email Melissa and let her know that came up as a question tonight, you know, and a, uh, you know, potential concern that we wouldn't want to see pricing dash drastically increase for sort of, I'll call them community partners like sports leagues, et cetera. Is that a fair way to put it? Yeah. And I think, you know, I've, I've also had some conversations offline with the town manager. I think the other thing is that for me, is and and Melissa really um, really did a, a fantastic job and and also to you and Andrew for doing a, a great job with the um, the procurement process um, and thank you for that. Um, but the question of public access, right? I think that's a that's a really key thing with you know how she described um, getting to that specificity with the vendor about understanding what it means to maintain public access. Um, making sure that, you know, to be honest with you, you could partner up with a nonprofit and some of those nonprofits um, have parking fees associated with them. So different things like that, that should be kept in the, kept in the forefront of, of making sure that the, the public access is, is still maintained at, um, at, a, at, a, at a reasonable amount and, and, and to the best of our ability, maintain it still as a, a free grounds for people to walk on. Maybe the house is treated differently because it's a revenue generating facility, but you know, especially the grounds and, and things like that. Okay. This is, you know, I, that's great feedback and I'll make sure that she gets it. I think that's, that's value that as a committee we bring to, to this. So. Yeah. And then the other question I have and in full disclosure, I've talked to her about the economics and I think this is going forward, but this is just my opinion too, is whether or not this this committee as as a group of concerned citizens as the economics come into more focus um, are able to kind of um, think through that because one of the things I'm concerned about is a lot of the discussion in the long term plan, a lot of the discussion about the FinCom and other people is the impact of the Stevens estate on the the um, town's finances, right? And this has an opportunity to generate more capital. Um, but to, I think, a point that was raised earlier, it should be really crystal clear for the public to understand, you know, what we're giving up in terms of the revenue and what the town still retains and being a very apples to apples comparison, right? So to your point about the last presentation said utilities are retained by the town. Um, we know more events cause more utilities to go up, right? And therefore net revenue will go down. Um, buildings and grounds is an area where it's not really clear from the 96 page document, you know, how that's gonna be divided up um, between the vendor and us. So that can also affect it. So I think if there's a way that people can really understand what this is um, financially and how that helps affect the long-term ability to generate capital to reinvest in the building and the property is a is a really important part of the conversation okay and i'll be quiet now <laughs> just one one comment dave if it's okay uh yep. through you to, to just uh, on the on the utilities piece I, I i recall and i don't have it right in front of me so i can't recall it uh, verbatim but it they expressed um 
you know, being responsible for any event related costs. And to your point, Tom, the, you know, when you have more events, like util something like utilities, for instance, goes up because you're in the winter, for instance, you're heating that house for longer during that period of time where people are using the estate. So I guess um, remains to be seen if some amount of the utilities get woven into there, uh, the cost will be covering. If we can directly attribute some portion of that to the use of the property for events. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. So I don't know if the book is closed on that yet. No, and I think that's good feedback. And I think the more that we can be transparent about that and, and do that apples to apples comparison that says, you know, this was the amount that the estate generated for capital investment pre and post. Um, and also, you know, defining things like utilities and buildings and grounds and insurance and, you know, coming up with a way to articulate that, I think helps people understand the the trade-offs in this decision. And, and if the goal is to generate capital through this to, to reinvest in the estate, um, how much and when that capital will become available. Understood. Okay, I think I captured that. Um, so the key points there, Tom, just to summarize, make sure I have them right, should be, it should be made, you're recommending it should be made clear uh, to the public, right? What the what the impact or the predicted financial operating financials would be, and also explain uh, the anticipated scenarios of generating long term capital, and maybe compare that to best years of the past, right? So people can see that it's an improvement. Sorry, I was on mute. I think in any you know even in DORs best practices and the state best practices. When you look to privatize a, a um, municipal service or a municipal facility, I mean they they have a lot of best practices where they they suggest that you really come up with an apples to apples comparison, so that you're making sure that it's you know a financially sound decision. Um, so I think that that's an important perspective of this. Okay. Since a lot of the conversation out of the you know other boards has been around the financial implications of the estate to the to the community. So I think that's that's something really important. Yep. Okay. All right, I think I have that. Any other comments on uh, on my part A? <laughs> the A. All right, then we'll go to 3B and still in the chairman's update, which is the, basically an overview discussion of the findings of the DOR review of our operations. Um, I don't actually have uh, I don't have a copy of that. Um, but I know I also know that uh, you go ahead, Andrew. I was gonna say I have a copy of the document if you want me to share it. Yeah, I think um, That was made. I'm just trying to remember, right? That was made public, right? So everyone yes. has everyone yep. had, had access. Yep. Yep. That was provided I, to us. And yep. the, the the version I have is uh, with the cover memo from Melissa to the board of selectmen. That's right. That's right. Okay. Apologize, guys. In my head, it's you know, very honest. I've been wrapped up in in the, mm -hmm. uh, you know my school committee campaign, and I'm just unwinding from that. So some of this stuff I have to think about for a minute to get it back into my head. Right, so we've all seen that. So the point of this this um, my, uh, this uh, agenda item was for us as a board to discuss that, right? I didn't have any preconceived uh, uh, thing to say here. I just wanted to open that up for review and to make it to capture anything we want to ask for clarifications on. If I may speak, I, I would like to uh, schedule another meeting to go over both the RFP and the DLS report in detail. Okay. We need to have Jean a part of this. She's got a real good head for um, the financial aspects uh, for both of these, having served in town government and also contracts. I am... I am not uh, well versed in all of the issues, the financial issues, 
with uh, that are, are raised by the Department of Local Services, and I would like an opportunity to discuss them as a board. Okay, so you, you're proposing we have a separate meeting just to talk about that? The DLS and the RFP. I, I don't think we've had an opportunity. To, I know we haven't had an opportunity to discuss it as a board. It has been presented to us. We have had feedback on how the meetings went, but we haven't had an opportunity to discuss the content. And I'm missing big pieces. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I guess. And it goes it, even at the beginning where one of the RFPs didn't make it to town hall in time. If we knew that the trustees were interested, why didn't we close the bid and reopen it so that they could respond to it? Why aren't we opening it up to a, a variety to. So, I, so, so yeah. I think that's really dangerous ground we're treading on, right? This yeah. was a, this it's was just a, a question. No, I know, but this is, there are very clear state laws about procurement. And Andrew can jump in on this too. Yeah, it's just once. And, you know, the guidelines are very specific about um, to ensure fair and open, transparent um, cooperation, uh, you know, uh, accommodations for all vendors that, you know, that's why there's a time limit. And if they missed it, they missed it, right? That, yeah, I mean, can I jump in, Tommy? Yeah, I, I, yeah yes. absolutely. So, Robin, that uh, maybe that wasn't made clear, but so Melissa's stance on, on rejecting the, the trustee's bid that came in 20 minutes late was exactly what Tom was just describing, that the law is very clear. It has to be rejected. She even went a step further and double checked it with town council to be sure. I read that in her memo. Yeah, it was she was interpreting it correctly and got you know an affirmation that she was. So it was you know when she uh, moved the art review committee forward, she said, "Guys, we just can't, we cannot do that. You know, we, we have to reject it. It's 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 uh, it's out of our hands." Yeah, so, just. Yeah, and sorry, and as to why it was late, I don't know, but you know, it's not like they didn't know they had a deadline. So, I, I don't know. Yeah. That's just saying. one small example that I think we need to discuss as a board. We have not had a discussion about it. We've but had conversations, but but isn't that the intent of intent of these two agenda items? It is. I don't to think discuss. that we have enough time. Forty-five minutes to discuss. The DLS report and the RFP. We've already been in the meeting for almost an hour, and we're just finishing up the RFP. And I don't think that we've taken the RFP apart piece by piece to know what's there and what the commitments are on both sides. I'm not clear on it. Well, you mean the response? You mean the you do mean the response to the RFP, right? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah. terminology is wrong. Um, well, I, I would propose this. Um, I do think that that a, a, a full discussion of, of the overview here might take would, would definitely take us beyond our time. Maybe what we ought to do uh, uh, is try to finish part A and everything else we have on this agenda and save save the discussion with DOR for another day. I mean, Jerry is right. That was my intent was to cover these things tonight. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, what, what more about the response do you want to know? I want to know what Jean thinks. For one well, thing. I mean, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a little frustrated. Jean should be here and she's right. not. And, right. you know, Which I'm sure she has an incomplete a, discussion. Yeah, I'm sure she has a good reason, but, you know, we, we can't, we can't can't make progress. I, I don't know what to do about that. I, I don't have infinite time to do this stuff and neither does anybody else. So, you know, um, as far as I knew, she could make this meeting. So, you know, I'm, and I like Jean and I'm sure she had a great reason. I'm sure something happened, but I, I mean, I don't know. But I, guess, I so, but I guess just again, back on the RFP. Yeah. So the, just to reiterate a point that was made earlier, the financial aspect of the response was not part of the evaluation committee's um, mission, mission, purview, whatever. Yeah. And that it was certainly an open item. 
and Melissa, I think, also heard it at the select board as well, that there's some follow-up to do as part of the negotiations to come back to the select board with additional detail and additional clarity, which would include the financial aspects. And I think in addition, Tom added some kind of commentary around, um, around that as well. So I think we could provide input into that, but I'm not sure what additional uh, information we need to review as a board uh, for that, because because we all agree that Dave was going to be the representative mm -hmm. for both the RFP review and for the eval committee, um, and I think he did. He didn't. Dave didn't do it in a silo. <laughs> um, he tried to keep us informed as best we can. But there's a lot of unknowns pending negotiation of the contract that I think, Robin, to your point, I think are still open for most of us here, probably. But we just don't have the answers to it until, and we can discuss it ad nauseum, but we can't that's, resolve that's, anything. I'm not looking for answers. I'm trying to come up with commentary from us as a board on what we, how we perceive this. I think we need to cooperatively develop some of the outline that needs to be reviewed when in contract negotiations, we, we will be thinking of things that I think that we could contribute to this process. Yeah. So, so I'll, I'll add to that. I mean, for, for Dave's perspective and the rest of the committee, you know, reading through the, the RFP, they, and the scoring sheets and all the, the documents, the, the company seems to be a good company. They've done well in other properties. They've done, um, lots of events they seem to have made a commitment to keep on joanna which is something that's very very concerning to me so i guess for me as a resident of town i i guess i have three major issues one is the economics of this deal to ensure it actually generates the revenue necessary to take care of the entire state right because many people on the fincom the board of selectmen other places have complained and, and articulated concerns around the, the economics of the estate. So apples to apples, will this generate more revenue for the estate? Two is protecting our workforce and making sure that they are adequately transitioned to the new vendor. And I think the third issue for me is um, management of the public forests and um, trails aspects, right? So if they're not doing it, who's doing that? Is it gonna be the town? Is it gonna be a third party? And who specifically is that third party that's gonna step in to work with um, that? Do we create a friend group, you know, friends of Osgood Hill that can go out there and take care of the trails? Something similar to Avis or another institution. So. As a resident, those are my three perspectives that I really am concerned about tonight and kind of the next steps with the bid. So, um, you know, I'm capturing all of, so my intent tonight was to capture stuff like that, right? Yeah. Feed it back to, to um, Melissa and the selectmen. And that, that was what I thought our contribution would be. So, I mean, if there's more, Robin, if you have other specific things you want to add to that, what Tom's summary and what I, what, uh, I, I met, what I summarized earlier, um, let's let's talk about that now, and and that way I can give one complete set of feedback. Um, but yeah, that was the point of of this tonight. So I, I, I mean, if you want to have another meeting about the DOR, that might make more sense to me. But let, let's try to finish this because it's timely. Also, right, this is all going to happen soon. So if we want to give if we want to give feedback on on the RFP value or the negotiations, I really should say, if we want to give them input regarding their negotiations, we better do it now, or we'll right. lose our opportunity. Well, I had envisioned us sitting around a table and looking at it and going through it page by page and collaborating on a response. That's my mo. I see. So I don't see time for that. Um, so I, want to, I, 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 I like Tom's points 
I want to protect the interests of the estate. And I just, I'm not as, I'm not as well versed in things financial, but apparently that's not the point right now. Right. I mean, so for, I just, yeah, for financial concerns, I think, I mean, I guess we can kind of, if we want to talk about that, we can. I wasn't really prepared to tonight, but we could, you know, we could uh, uh, all examine that for uh, Melissa's recommendations. But as far as this RFP evaluation goes, I, as far as I know, I'm not allowed to share this document with anybody. Um, you know, the document being this, Andrew, the, the, right? No, no, you can. That, that's, been, that's been released. Oh, all right. That, that's, so Rob, been, that's public information. Okay, so Robin, yes, you're public. So yeah. you, want, you want to go through this thing page by page? Is that what you're proposing? I think that we should all review it ahead of time and then bring our comments to a meeting and decide what's important and format a response. That's, that's the way I've always done things. Okay. Right. So, so and we they, need to really uh, come up with some advice for the town we, we've been on this board now for a number of months, years, and we, we have a perspective that I think the town would be, um, should be welcome to listen to. Okay, uh, well, let me do this. I, I, I think that needs to be, a, um, I'm not in favor of that, uh, to be frank, but, it, but if, if the board votes to do that, we'll do that. Um, so if you'd like to make a motion, then please do. and. And we'll go from there. I, I mean, my intent was to, based on based on tonight's uh, discussion, to give whatever recommendations as a board we want to give to Melissa. So um, I'll entertain that motion, and, and you know, if it, if it passes, we'll do it. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to hold a meeting to review the um, the information received from the town manager in her report regarding the response to the RFP. Wow. Okay. And also the Department of Revenue Division of Local Services report. Um, there is some minor overlap between the two in that the Department of Revenue suggests that there be a collective review within the town prior to the acceptance of, um, of a proposal. So I want to see where those overlaps are and to make sure that we are within the boundaries of, uh, as suggested by the Department of Revenue. Okay. Is there a second? I'll, right. I'll second for form's sake. Okay. All right. Um, that's fine. Discussion? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because I, I, I sense some reticence on the board and I just, I just yeah. want to find out what that is. Right. I mean, I, I guess uh, I'll be, I mean, I, <laughs> um, I sort of feel like I've been through this uh, as the board's representative. And uh, I'm, now that I know it's public, I, I'd be happy to answer anything in here. Uh, and talk about any specifics that you like, but I, I just don't know that I want to go through another whole meeting dedicated to that. That's just my view. But like I said, I mean, uh, if everybody wants to do it, I'm fine with it. It's just not something I think we need to do. But that's just my opinion. Jerry, do you want to comment? Yeah, my, my view is I think the RFP and the and the DLS um, feedback are really, well, Robin, you're probably right that they are related to some degree, but in my, in my mind, they're, they're really separate activities. And um, I'm, I'm not sure of the value of going through the response to the RFP, given the number of questions that are still open that were discussed at the select board and actually was input from the evaluation uh, committee members also had comments a number of comments around the feedback uh, around that i think that that 
the DOR slash DLS, you know, feedback or review. I think that's certainly appropriate. And we could, if we can't do that today, then we we put that on the agenda for the next meeting. So one suggestion would be to basically split the split the motion into two pieces. One is review of the RFP and responses or report or whatever you're looking for, Robin. And then the other is essentially to table the DOR discussion for the next meeting. Make it make it the first on the agenda for the next meeting. Okay, I'm going to withdraw my motion. Okay. <laughs> and what Jerry said. <laughs> So, so do you still want to move both things separately, Robin, or do you want to just talk about the deal? DOR? I mean, I'm the DOR needs more attention. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I, I'm good with that one. Okay. <laughs> if you want so my, shall I rephrase? Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to table the DOR discussion from tonight to a, a date in the near future, so that we can all discuss the ramifications of their suggestions and uh, resolutions together. Okay. Uh, and I'll second that motion. Okay. So uh, let's do a, a, a call on that. Um, so Robin, there's a motion on the floor to to um, uh, have us. Uh, you want to make it a dedicated? Well, actually, we we'll just call a meeting in the near future before a whole month goes by. To uh, uh, yeah, to the next week or two. Yeah. All right. Can we make it a single agenda item meeting? That way, we definitely. Um, in fact, we should because we then won't, it would be short. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, it, well, the point is, we don't really need to go through the rest of this stuff again two weeks from now or a week from now. So, yeah, it, uh, I, I like that. And so, Jerry, what's your stance on that? Yes or no? Yes. Aye. Favor. Favor. <laughs> um, Robin? I presume you're in favor. Aye. Okay. Uh, Tom? Aye. Okay. And I vote in favor of that as well. So that passes. We will call a meeting dedicated, yes, dedicated to, to the DOR review in the near future. Now, before we move on to the rest of our agenda for tonight, does anyone have anything further about the RP they want to talk about? Or my, you know, the RP evaluation? Yeah. Nope. Okay. So, um, item four uh, review of current financials. And Jerry, that's yours. Oh, you're on mute. Sorry about that. So, the report. Um, that was attached to the agenda. That's that's the report. I think the board discussed it maybe at the, I think we discussed it at the January meeting, possibly at the February meeting as well. So that was just a summary of as of December 31st, 2020, mm -hmm. related to the operations, the revenues and, and the expenses. Steve. Yeah. Uh, I sent you, this was after the, the, uh, and I apologize for interrupting Jerry, just really quickly. I, um, I sent you a snapshot of the retained earnings. I don't know if you saw that, Dave. I did. I, I can, I, um, I, I put that up as, as people are um, interested. Okay. Just wanted to make sure you got that. And, and to the extent that it's relevant to this conversation, let you know. Yeah. It probably is the best thing we, it's probably the most relevant financial information we can look at tonight. Yeah, it's the most, it's the, obviously the most current. Yeah, so, here, so bear with me, I'll, I'll uh, have it up in a second. Here it is. So let me open it. All right, let me share that window. It's going to be so me turn it around for you. You guys see it? Yep, got it. I'm making it bigger. Hang on. There we go. All right. Everybody take a minute to look at that. Then we have our actual number. Um, at the moment, right? So the enterprise fund is 
has gone uh, below zero. That might that's my interpretation here, right? As of three thirty. Yeah. Yes, but um, and and I think um, this is this is known. The there are some capital projects that haven't been executed. So there's there's un uh, unspent capital funding that would have to be reappropriated back into the retained earnings through a town meeting vote. Yeah. Um, but but as far as yeah, the current money on hand that's uh, exclusive of that, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. So, did, so I think this point, Andrew, thank you for bringing that up because I think this point is is a little bit confusing when you think about the fund and you look at this is that the the funds that were appropriated I think over the last cycle and maybe a little bit of the residual from the previous cycles are encumbered in the fund but unspent right so the actual cash is is higher than that negative value it just happens to be encumbered for the capital projects and can't be used until town meeting votes to um, reverse those appropriations right that's correct so there, so there is actually a little bit more so in this projection the fund is actually negative but really it's not negative because there's money above the line that's encumbered for other purposes yes yeah did we get the answer to the question of whether reappropriated capital funds can be applied to the current fiscal year or to fy22 that was no, an open would, question from January. They would fall into the current fiscal year, Jerry. Current fiscal year, okay, yep. good. If you read the enterprise manual and, and some of the comments by the DOR, um, it would be appropriated back as part of the fund balance. So it would just be undesignated fund balance. Okay, thanks. Okay. So, I guess one question from this is, Andrew, does that mean that the quote unquote line of credit, your your the town has to dip into that line of credit for cash flow purposes? Yeah, I mean, so I guess it, it, I I think it's we have to see where it shakes out at the end of the year. I um I mean I mean technically are we in the red right now? Yes. Um, but, at, you know, like Joanna, and I'm sure she'll explain this, um, I think in another agenda item, you know, there's several events that are going on, uh, before mm -hmm. the end of the fiscal year closing. And so revenue from those events can close and, and, and obviously bring the, uh, the, uh, the fund balance back into the black, the fund balance right. being exclusive of those capital projects we just right. mentioned. Um, so the question becomes, do, does the. Uh, state fully pay for itself, exclusive of all of the deposits that we're receiving this year, which I, this is another confusing point. I, I totally cop to the fact that it's uh, confusing and I wish it wasn't like this. Uh, this is DLS telling us this is how we have to do it. Um, we cannot, again, just to remind folks, we cannot use uh, um, deposits we receive for events are going to be happening in a future fiscal year for um, expenses in this fiscal year. Correct. So as long as we're net positive, exclusive of those deposited funds, then we wouldn't owe the town any money or back, okay. you know, back from that line of credit. Yeah. Okay. So you're so we just have to, to kind of see how it plays out. Yeah. So you're, you know, the town is following the guidelines and, you know, ex expending in advance of receipts is the way we would say it in the state system or state accounting would be you're able to deficit fund. And then as long as the, the fund is um, solvent at the end of the fiscal year, unless you're able to carry forward a negative balance, it just has to be in the black by the end of the year. Okay. That's my understanding. Yes. Yeah. And it's pooled cash anyway. So from a cash flow perspective, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Okay. All right. So, this, um, you know, clearly COVID is a little bummer. <laughs> lack of a more sophisticated way to put it um well i think just another comment oh yeah. sorry dave did you no, no, I really, I didn't <laughs> didn't mean to interrupt <laughs> i didn't have any more. that's all i had to say go ahead jerry sorry. yeah so i think just um as since this is as of the end of march if you look at the expense line well salaries and expense line 
um, compared to budget, you know, that those are, and obviously if there's less events, so that that's certainly a contributor to it, but I, I would say just kind of in general, Joanna and the, the town has done a good job of managing expenses through this period, this, uh, I guess, 3Q, fiscal year 21, 3Q. Um, so certainly kudos, I think, to, to proactively trying to manage as in a kind of an awkward situation to get to a better place and hopefully, uh, you know, minimize the gap between the estate fund and uh, and what we potentially may need from the town to supplement. So thanks to Joanna and the rest of town support for that. Yeah. Thanks, Jerry. So I think we better, I mean, unless someone has any more questions of those, we better speed up because we only have about 20 minutes left and they're going to throw us off. So um, if I may, I will stop sharing. Uh, okay. So let's um, continue. Is there anything else, Jerry, you want to say about um, about the current financial situation? Well, we have Part C, 4C, oh, yeah. which is Joanna's. Right. That's um, uh, budget piece. status. Yeah, budget status update. And then, Joanna, you're also going to be speaking later about um, you know your monthly update, or if you want to just do them all together, that's fine. I need to unmute. There you did go. you want me to? Did you want me to do it now? My presentation now, or? Yeah, I mean, do you do you, uh, you is your presentation also going to include comment on the current budget fiscal year twenty? Yeah, yeah. So I just basically a summary of where we are, booking support, units, expenses, revenue, etc. Okay. All right. So then, let's do that, and and uh, hopefully we we'll have a little time to do the other items. Go ahead. Okay. Can you see my screen? Not yet. Oh, okay. Missing them. Won't let me share for some reason. Oh, do I have to? No, I'm not actually the host, so you should be able to. Oh, I can do it now. Yeah, got it. Okay. Here it comes. Okay, okay. We, see, we see it now. Great, thank you. Okay, so um, this is the, the rest of this fiscal year, which started July and on June the 30th, 30th this year. Um, the the light, the numbers here are based on the booking report, which are the basis of the, the total events booked and the value of the events on the day. So I kept, just for, um, for measurement, I kept January and February's columns in and um added march so basically we went from um so can you can you scroll to the next slide i'm seeing the cover page oh i'm sorry cover slide there you go okay so yeah so basically i'm projecting full year revenue you can see that properly yep okay great um so I'm projecting revenue of 127,000 or there thereabouts, and it's roughly in line with the the last um, slide that we we saw. Our um, Munich current revenue is forty thousand dollars, seven hundred and ninety-five. We had two events that moved from this fiscal year into next fiscal year, so that's why there's an adjustment there. But again, as Dave was saying, this excludes all of our next year revenues and future year revenues. So as right now, um, I'm projecting us to be 60% of budget at the most by the end of the fiscal year in terms of our expenses. And this is what my, I'm anticipating at the end of the year in terms of our um, loss or in the red. 
is ninety three thousand dollars. But again, I I I I put that on the pitch that on the high side, so I'm expecting it to come in less than that. Um, are there any questions so far? So why is so why is the expenses go up so much in one quarter? Does it, why does it go from eighty one at the end of third quarter to twenty two thousand at the end of the fourth quarter? Well, basic. So the projected full year is based on I calculated FY 16, 17, 18, and nineteen. So the average of four years, their fourth quarter expenses. Um, so it's not a normal year. Granted, we haven't got anything in April, um, but like I said, that's why I said it was on the high side. So I'm anticipating less than that, probably more like 200 to 210,000 uh, um, based on how we've been able to save funds and reduce our expenses this year. If we continue to the end of June in that way, um, it will be less than that 60% of budget. But like I said, that was just the average based on four, year, four previous normal years of events um, of an event calendar in that last fourth quarter. Hey, Joanna, I, I have yes. a question, um, and this might be something you and Andrew need to take back, but has there been any discussions um, with you, uh, between you and the town manager about um, the, the latest round of COVID relief that was issued by the federal government? Even though the um, guidelines haven't been issued by Treasury yet, there are provisions in there for towns to recoup um, from the feds lost revenues um, due to COVID related um, restrictions and mandates. Um, that would be separate, I believe, from the base $9 million the town is getting in formula funds. But right. have there been any discussions with town accountant or leadership in town hall about applying for those funds? No, I haven't actually, um, I guess when I first asked about it, it was right at the beginning of the pandemic. And um, basically I didn't want to take what the town was being given um, to use to cover our expenses. Um, but I also searched into what the private, you know, private businesses were looking for funds too. So basically I couldn't uh, find any way of doing it last spring, but I'll definitely take this offline and ask Andrew um, tomorrow and we can, maybe we can look into it and see if there's anything that can help cushion that uh, anticipated loss at the end of the year. Yeah, so, I, would, I would strongly encourage or encourage you to look at that because I think the, the provisions in the second bill are different from the first bill. And I right. think some of those programs are separate and distinct from the, the formula funds that you're getting, mm -hmm. that the town's getting from the feds. So I think it That's might be, right. um, it might be advantageous for us to explore that. Yep, we can certainly we can certainly have that conversation. Thanks, Tom. Great, yeah, thanks, Tom. Um, do I move on? I'm moving on. Okay, so, um, oh, hang on. So, yeah, so I went to, I kept this second page in because it really illustrates how the bookings are still coming in really, really strongly. Um, I added January. I, I added March. I thought. Can March you click it to make it to make it active? Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. There we go. Um, so uh, as you can see, our average inquiries didn't really change from the last couple of months. We've had such a high um, number of inquiries. I've had more inquiries in the last three months than we I had in the first year that I was here. Um, it's crazy, obviously, for all of these obvious reasons related to COVID, et cetera, um, that we've talked about before. Um, but we've basically got 38 weddings on the books between this year and next year. And we have sold out all of our Saturdays in June next year. And we're just about to sell our last Saturday in July of next year. Um, and that's fantastic because typically March, uh, January through March is a really difficult time to sell the Stevens estate because it's winter doesn't look great, doesn't feel great, um, but we've got so much, um, so many photos online that people are already uh, confident when they come in the winter. So we're actually been able to book an incredible amount of weddings just in the last three months, um, which is really, really good. 
Um, any questions? Nope. Great. Okay. So I'll just move quickly to the next one. All right. So this is uh, basically FY2 where we stand right now. So um, based on the booking report, so this is not including um, bookings that we've got in the pipeline. Um, the revenue I'm anticipating for the full year, including you know up up spending on the day of the event, is 410,000, which is uh, ahead of budget, which is fantastic if we had a full year budget. <laughs> um, but basically, this is where we see this is where I would normally see our expenses falling into place, and that is that is our actual. If we had a full year budget for FY 2022, it would be that number there instead of a quarter. So I see ourselves right now at this point, even though we've still got nine months of the uh, prime booking season for FY 22 still to go, we're making $88,000 in profit. And then right at the bottom, um, we have got $47,000 or $62,000 in FY 23 bookings, which is July the 1st next year onwards. Okay. Uh, any questions? That's that's great. Is this John? Is this um? Did you email me this already? No, I emailed it to Bernadette. Put on the book on the on the agenda, but I'll send it to you uh, straight afterwards, Dave. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. I'd like to have it because I will I'll send it along uh, with the the um, comments uh, we talked about earlier that 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 collected some time. Oh, great, great. Um, so that's basically all I have in terms of my presentation, but um, there's just a few updates with um, the Stevens estate. We're getting ready for the um, for the summer, for the peak season, the, May, the tents coming up at the beginning of May. Um, yes, we've got probably um, 12 to 14 events booked through May till the end of June. Um, we've got three high school graduations in addition to the weddings. We've got a dance recital, which is really cool. We've got the Stevens Memorial Library three-day book sale in May. Um, so, and lots of small social events are coming in now, like birthday parties and things like that. Um, uh, we just had some of the roofing uh, repaired yesterday um, that was caused of creating some damage on the, the big circular bay at the front of the house. Um, and then we've just had, um, we're having, in the process of having the dishwasher repaired finally, which is really exciting. So we'll be, no matter what happens with the Stevens estate, we'll be in good shape to run our weddings this year. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks. Sounds very good. Thank you. Can you uh, right. click stop your, there you go. There you go. Thank you. Thanks, Joanna. Um, All right. Uh, what we have left in only five minutes to do it is, uh, well, does anyone have any uh, further comments on Joanna's report? Nope. Okay. Um, there is a bunch of stuff that Robin suggested we talk about. I think we've covered a fair amount of it, but I just want to look through that. Um, so, uh, Robin, you want to read uh, part A? Well, these were just topics, and then the, um, yeah. the, the everything that followed was just for you, Dave. I didn't know that you were going to be putting it onto the agenda. Ah, okay. Um, I I I wanted to uh, bring up the forensic audit. Yep. Uh, I think that. Well, we're going I think to. That there are still some questions that yep. need to be answered there, so I would like to have an opportunity to discuss that more at length, and then the RFP. Those that question was answered uh, in the earlier part of this meeting. Yes. So, but the, but the forensic also, um, you also asked, uh, we congratulate Melissa Rodriguez for being nominated for YWCA's 3A. I was right. saving the best for last, yes. <laughs> okay. So, I work for Care Dimensions, uh, and our uh, vice president was nominated for Tribute to Women, so I've been keeping my eye on that. And then I saw Melissa's name there. And so, wanted to congratulate our town manager for being nominated. There is a uh, YWCA luncheon every year. They will not be hosting it in person this year. It will be virtual. So everybody will have a chance to, to see the event and uh, be able to probably do virtual congratulations to the nominees. 
All right, so we have that. And just regarding part B and C here, so I, I do agree that we've covered part C already, but part B is a little bit different than, than I mean, the forensic audit is not what the DOR did, right? It, it, that is something That's different. That's my point, right. Yes, yes. Right. So I think it's fair to to point out to the board, our this board, our board, that, that we, there are some things in our famous one list of one through 23 that we've never really gotten an answer to. Um, right. And I think, right, and I think that's what you're asking about here. Yes, it is. Yeah, okay, so um, in order so to- So in the next three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave, can I, make a, can I make a suggestion if it's okay? Please. So I was just gonna say, I think I'm in safe territory saying this on behalf of the town. I don't see the town proceeding with a forensic audit. I think we've sort of hashed that, that you know, that that issue out. Um, I'm not I'm not expecting um, Robin or others to necessarily be satisfied with that answer, but that's that's what I feel it, where the, where I feel the town is on that issue. Um, if there are it, because that report that the questions and the back and forth i know that the the town did a dump on uh, a bunch of documents and responses to a lot of that but to the extent that there are still um unquestioned or unanswered questions what i'd suggest is that the board and maybe you can take it up as one other little agenda item on that other meeting you're hosting is just if you want to write up the me a, a new memo that just says these specific questions haven't been answered yet if they haven't been, and we would like answers to them. And I'm happy to, you, you, you can obviously send it right to Melissa and she's very responsive about these things. And um, we can hopefully work with you on that. Um, I, just, I just think that we're so far removed from that back and forth on the larger information request that if you look through what we had sent you and you look through the original request and you're not and there's something still gnawing at you that you really want to get an answer to and you want to just parse that out and put that in an information request i'm sure we can okay. work on that this was written before i knew that uh, the contract negotiations had started so i know okay. that whatever we find out is not going to have an effect on that but i think that the it would be good to have answers in our minutes all right so, so I, I, I can I take like the action and I'll take up on that. Yeah. Yep. So I'll, I'll take the action to prepare what we've got responses on and stuff that's open and send that, you know, to the board. If we want to have a discussion at the little mini meeting that we're going to have in okay. the near future. Perfect. So Jerry's going to summarize whatever, whatever parts of one through 23 are still open. Yep. We can add that, Robin, if you're amenable to that, we'll add that to the agenda for this next meeting, this, this focus meeting. That sounds good. Okay. Uh, and I will um, I will schedule that as soon as I can. Uh, and those will be the two agenda items on it. If anyone has an objection, please raise it. I'm not going to go around the room for that one. Okay. And then the last thing, uh, uh, I had a, a line item here for marketing committee. Is there anything, Robin, you want to? quickly you mentioned about we that. We have not had a marketing meeting. We are, okay. where are we on the press release for the award that you received, Joanna? I forgot about that, sorry. I have to check in with Melissa again because I think okay. I sent it to her last so I'll, I'll check in. That's been the only activity we've had since the last meeting, so. Okay, perfect. Um, and I'm sorry, Robin, I didn't, I guess I misunderstood your message to me, but it, I think it all worked out okay. We got covered everything we were supposed to. Okay. Um, all right. Well, then uh, I think we've hit everything. Um, let me just double check that I don't have uh, any new emails from the public. And I do not. Uh, nope. I have nothing here. So there's no public input. Uh, we will have, um, I, I'll, like I just said, I'll schedule our next meeting date, our focus meeting date ASAP. So if uh, no one else has anything they need urgently to talk about, then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I make, I make a, motion a motion to adjourn. To adjourn. All right. Sim they, simultaneously, I'm going to give Jerry credit, though. Robin, you get the second. Uh, and, I'll uh, second. Okay, thank you. Um, Jerry in favor, yes? Aye. Yep. Robin? Aye. Tom? Aye. 
And I am certainly in favor. Joanna, thank you very much. Andrew, thank you very much. I'll, uh, I'll, go, I'll get the emails going to figure out a date for that focus meeting ASAP. Thank you, everybody. And Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Good night.